Good morning. You're listening to Central Wisconsin's 24-hour information station, AM 1320 WFHR. It's time now for the Morning Magazine, brought to you by Comfort Air Heating, Cooling, Plumbing. Welcome, everyone, to Morning Magazine for this August 18th, 2021. You have your host, James J. Mayloff, here. At 1030 today, we're going to speak with Dan Minter, president over at Assumption Catholic Schools. Right now, we have joining us in studio, Wisconsin Rapids Mayor Shane Blazer. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me, James. Good to have you with us. And, of course, we want to thank Kevin, our friends over at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. Good morning to you guys. Thanks for being here. Mayor, how you been? I'm good. I'm good. How about yourself? Good. Doing well. Um, I, I was going to say we're we're crazy busy around here, but I don't like saying that to people who are really crazy busy. Like, I, I can't imagine what everything that you've got going on. Yeah, I think we all have our own level of busy. And so, yeah, I'm um, not any busier than the next person. It's just a, probably a different busy. Right. Up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I thought that we might uh, start with a, a, a Verso Mill uh, update if there is one. So, yeah, and unfortunately, the last thing I've heard is... Uh, and I believe that's what was in the newspaper is that Verso has created a committee to evaluate the Atlas offer, but we have not heard anything beyond that. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like uh, most people are up to date on these things, but you never know. For every person that listens to us and reads the paper, there's at least a dozen people Absolutely. out there that don't do both. So mm-hmm. um, and thank you for touching on that. So what about uh, the um, you know utility fees and, and that? I know that that has come up as well. So currently right now, they haven't discussed it on on any committee in about the last month or so, because what they're doing is um, the committee has directed staff to compile an ordinance and, and bring that and put that together and bring that to uh, the committee and council for review. So that so they're kind of working on that and developing that right now. Mm-hmm. And then we can get it out to the public too, and, and they'll be able to see a draft ordinance and kind of chime in on it at that point. What brought this about? The, the utility? Yeah, just, uh, you know, the so, fees in general. That Yeah, so right now we currently assess property owners a special assessment and it's basically it's by the foot so if they're coming in front of my house reconstructing the road infrastructures i'm charged per foot of frontage that i have and those bills can be anywhere from seven to fifteen thousand dollars and usually you find out maybe the year before you kind of get this letter and you know i i don't think that's a fair way Especially, you know, I hear from seniors, fixed incomes, mm-hmm. people that are unemployed, that it is a very, it's an undue hardship. And, mm-hmm. and it's for most people, all of a sudden, hey, you need to pay $15,000. Mm-hmm. It's quite a bit, you know, yeah, when you're considering yeah. everything else that we have in our budgets. And and so, you know, myself, uh, another council person, um, it's kind of been discussed that we need to look at alternatives. So that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And we did a survey. It was not a large participation, but most surveys aren't. And, you know, there was discussions on whether do we do a wheel tax or do we just keep special assessment, you know, have a referendum, raise property taxes or uh, this transportation utility model. And that's kind of where it came about Mm -hmm. is this transportation utility model. And so staff has been researching, working on it, working with consultants. And it's it's not it's a newer thing in Wisconsin, but we're not the first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the, the oftentimes that helps uh, while everything is a case by case basis. It, it gives you an example, some data mm-hmm. to pull from. Exactly. See how it works. Yeah. And engineers, they have data for everything. So, yeah. you know, uh, this model is based on trips. How many times, like I leave my driveway, that's a trip. I come back home, it's a trip. And, you know, I think, you know, and it's debatable whether it's fair and equitable, but, you know, as a property or a homeowner, you know, if you look at this, at the, uh, special assessment model it's it's put a lot of that burden is put on the residential and they're not creating the traffic and um and so this might hopefully what the goal would be to spread it out more equitably above among all the people that have vehicles and Mm -hmm. and they're operating whether it be businesses and are you going to be uh releasing another survey um um, on this this probably not just because i think we've We've determined that we've come up with this is the model that we're going to use. And now it'll be up to the council whether or not they choose to pass it. And if they don't, we'll just keep the special assessment model that's been in existence for many, many decades. And we'll just continue to do that. Um, I appreciate that. And, and certainly we, we definitely appreciate, you know, not just taking the um, status quo. You know, saying, oh, this is what we've been doing. We're just going to keep doing that. Mm-hmm. If there's a way to improve something and make it, you know, uh, respectable but still financially feasible, yeah. you know, that we appreciate those things. Those are things that we would, I, you know, we look for. And the big debate on this and is, uh, you know, 
there's there's people out there that think it's a it's a new tax and mm-hmm. and versus a fee and you know tax fee, you know I, I just think it's more equitable, um, and that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. And there's people that differ on that. And mm-hmm. but um, you know there there's a large amount of residents out there that that struggle with that bill. Yeah. And um, you know or they're paying it off for the next ten to fifteen years in their property taxes, which it's still you know it's mm-hmm. it's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather put that money into my house and prove prove the value of my house because I'll get that back someday. I won't get I won't get the value yeah. of my street back because it's right. not mine. Speaking mm-hmm. of streets, though, uh, it looks like things have been going pretty smoothly as far as street construction goes. Yeah, we hit a hiccup here uh, over on 18th Avenue. You can see that construction stopped, and what happened was um, the Bob Richardson and the crew that does the road construction they are out on A Street now, and A Street has a culvert over on Eighth and Grove and. And we have a creek that runs through there, and that, that creek runs through a lot of the city to the east from that point underground in culverts. Well, that culvert over the decades has began to fail, and so it's actually collapsing. Mm. And so it became an emergency road construction project that, because there's void, there was void spaces underneath. Um, you know, I, I saw a camera footage of the this this robot thing that they have that goes through yeah, them yeah. to be able to check out the, and, and you can see it's collapsing and there's, it's the creek is being blocked underneath there. And mm. so for the safety of the traffic, that's why we're dealing with a mess up there right now. And, yeah. and they're shifting because they're trying to open up the road, replace culvert, compact it down, mm-hmm. get it set up and open up the next session, go right down the line. And they're going to have to come back and kind of do something similar when we start putting in the curb and then have to asphalt it. But it was kind of a, a project that we knew was coming about, but we didn't realize how maybe dire that has become that we, for the safety of the public and especially the cars going over it. We didn't want it to collapse. Uh, especially in, of all the streets, that mm-hmm. one in particular. And Correct. this, we, we've seen stories like this throughout you know our lives, but this summer in particular, we've seen more stories than ever of infrastructure falling and breaking. Mm-hmm. And uh, too many times people have to play defense. It, it's mm-hmm. good to hear some offense going on with this. Yeah. We knew it was going to be a project coming about, but it, it, it became more prevalent that it needed to be done now, especially um, with the parking lot right next to it. They started developing a sinkhole. And as that wash was, that, that understructure was getting washed out, the, the asphalt was caving in and, and it became a, a pretty apparent that we needed to get going on this right away. So everything was remobilized over there, which is going to put this project on the west side behind. And, you know, it may not get through by the end of the year and we'll just pick up there next year. But this was definitely more of a, it was a, as a priority. Yeah. The, the mm-hmm. time is of the essence kind of thing. It kind of was. Uh, I And I think that it's also interesting and I really appreciate you breaking it down for us mm-hmm. because I found that a lot of people don't e- didn't even know that was there, the, mm-hmm. the culvert. Right. Um, to, to the point, I didn't um, mm-hmm. in, until maybe a year ago. I didn't know that it was there. And my, I haven't spent a whole lot of time in that area, but my mm-hmm. sister worked at Culver's for many oh, yeah. years. And yep. I'd go pick her up after work a lot of times mm-hmm. and was over there. And I noticed a little creek over there and didn't think twice mm-hmm. about it. Oh, there's a creek there. You know, we see those spread mm-hmm. out all over. We don't think about what's beneath. Right. And, yeah. And starting at that, uh, well, it used to be a Bogart and Carl parking lot there. It, it's it's pushed underground there in culverts mm. and it runs pretty much all the way through. It pops up once in a while as you keep going east, but it's a lot of it's running culverts underground right now. And, um, and there's buildings and parking lots on it and, uh, we just go forward, but, mm. but there's still infrastructure and it was a culvert yeah. and through time it eroded and washed away. And now it's just sinking, collapsing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not good. <laughs> not good um, we've already got an aquatic center. We, we yeah, don't need we don't, that. We, yeah, don't, we, um, we don't need to jump in the middle of no, Street. No, no, no. <laughs> There's some of us that find it cool a little yeah, bit, but I, I, no, Motorcycles I might, but not, yeah, no, yeah, no outside trucks. of that, I don't think our 18 wheelers would like it too <laughs> no, much. not at all. Um, I, I do think too, uh, one, one of the things that stands out to me about this is that, uh, you know, for, this is the one project, really. Uh, other than that, these the projects have been going pretty smoothly for the most part. Yep, I think it's I, noteworthy. Yeah, all of our projects this year, and I think you know, having an early spring and the weather's been conducive for construction, that all our projects have been moving along pretty much without a hitch, and um, everything's looking good. And you know, we've got this uh, this A Street project added in here, and this fall we'll finish up helping out with our part of connecting the sanitary sewer to the the sports complex at Lincoln mm-hmm. High School. We'll do that in the fall kind of tie that in from the private to the public connection there. Mm. And, um, but yeah, everything knock on wood's been going smoothly yeah. and, um, and they're those, that construction crew is forging ahead and they're doing a great job. 
We talked about this the last time you were here, for those who may have not heard it. And I, again, just I think it's good data and something that we want to get the information out there with. A Street's a little different than all of our other streets, though. That is a, a, a state highway. Correct. And that means a little difference w when it comes to budgeting these things or, or really even doing them, you know, having any control of, of when it's getting worked on at all. Yeah, you know, and we just recently met with some engineers from mm. the state, and it was a very good conversation about A Street. And, um, you know, hopefully we can get that on the plan to start rebuilding sections of that. Um, you know, there's I, I, when I met with them, I didn't realize how many factors. And you go in to look at a street and think, wow, the street is looking rough. Well, and it's not that old. Or, you know, there's sections of A Street that are older than other sections, but those older sections are actually in better shape and repair mm. than some of the newer ones. And, and learning that, you know, concrete is different over the decades, how they how they make it. And they're finding out some concrete is better than other concrete. And so it's kind of unique to listen to the engineers and, and all the thought that goes into replacing it because they have – they're allocated X number of dollars for a section of the state, and they have to spread that all over that section. So they have to evaluate all these roads and try to prioritize them. And I'm glad to see that A Street, especially on the south end down towards Tractor Supply, is uh, rising to the level where it's getting closer to being mm -hmm. done than not done. And it is definitely a need in anybody that drives out there. It's it's a mess, and it's a rumble strip. Yeah. And yeah. Um, uh, my uncle was an architect, my uncle Ralph, and oh. those conversations you were talking about, so interesting. There's mm -hmm. so many fascinating things that they think yeah. of and you wouldn't think that you do had yeah. to think of, but exactly. that they take into consideration and all that. The mm -hmm. con um, the concrete thing is just uh, like that alone is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's unique. And I was I was I actually left a meeting feeling like I learned something. And right, it was, yeah. was kind of nice. It's and always a good feeling. It was very interesting. <laughs> We do, we do also like to remind people that when it comes to any of these things, uh, especially if you know about them ahead of time, slow down, leave a little bit mm -hmm. early. Please, please, please keep an eye out for all of our hard workers out there that are just trying to do their job. Yeah, and, and especially on A Street there, we know it's kind of affecting some of the businesses and they're trying to um, go through it and get this done as quickly as possible um, and making sure it's done correctly and safely. And um, just bear with them there. They're, they're trying to get out of there as soon as possible because we know the traffic and we know Labor Day is coming up and school and they're, they're trying to get through it and make sure we have a good product by the end of it. You know that, well said. Uh, you, you know that uh, la you mentioned Labor Day. We know what that means, the end of summer and all. And another sign of that is the Aquatic Center is going to be wrapping up, I believe, Sunday? Yep, Sunday the 22nd. Hmm. Um, it seems like a, a, from the outsider looking in, successful year over there with the Aquatic Center. Yeah, you know, I think we are we started talking about the revenue side last uh, like the last meeting we had on finance. And um, in another month or two, we'll actually talk about an added and expense side in it and see, you know, how, how much we're in the red. But, you know, I've kind of been always not been a biggest proponent of the Aquatic Center, however we have it. And so we need to make it the best as possible, uh, the most financially successful for the taxpayers. Um, it's a great it's a great asset in the community. I think, you know, when you're talking about getting a sports complex up and running, you know, people are coming to the community, whether it be for that or BMX or, you know, soccer and some of the events that we have here. But having the aquatic center and these things for families to take other kids to or to do in between is very important to the community. And, and I think that would be the asset. And, you know, we've been hearing online, you know, people are complaining that we're closing so early and mm -hmm. come to find out we're closing later than some of the other places in the area. Mm -hmm. But we run yeah. into, you know, our college kids are going back, our high school kids are going back to sports. And if there would be adults that would apply, we would have gladly hired them. We just don't have adults that apply for, for that position. It's typically a, a student type of employment and we can't control that. And we, yeah. there's been a lot of negative feedback, but... Boy, if you if anybody wants to go get their uh, lifeguard certification, we'll we'll yeah. we'll send them to the water park certification before the season. Any adult, and we would gladly see like to see you apply, and we can hopefully then keep it open later. Never ceases mm -hmm. to amaze me the 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 way people can see one side mm -hmm. of a story and that's it. Yeah, you know? and it takes you know to open up all the pools. I think somewhere around fifteen or so guards. I, I was going to gonna say fourteen, yeah, fifteen, somewhere. yeah. So. You know, it's not like we can hire one or two guards like the old pools that we had in the community where it only took a couple of guards. Yeah, you rotate them, but there's a whole lot more going on now. And and so, yeah, you need a lot more guards there to be. And that's that's not something we decided. That's something that we're required to do. Right. For and, safety. And, and for good mm -hmm. reason. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, if, if you can't have that, 
you just can't open those doors. You just right. can't have it. Yep. It, or we have to close down a pool and then you figure out, you know, do you, is it worth closing down a pool, reducing capacity? Is there, how much is that going to cost to do that? And, you know, that's a struggle. And I, we were able to, I, I would like to see it, would have been like to see it stay open at least through Labor Day. Sure. Um, but, you know, I get it. My daughter's had an off to college too, and, and she works there and it, it's just the way it is. And, yeah. But um, we are doing something exciting, though, on August 23rd. Mm -hmm. On Monday, we're going to have, it's called Gone, Gone to the Dogs Pool Party. Yeah. And so they're going to allow dogs in there. Um, it's uh, They're looking for $5 per dog and a donation to the Humane Society. Um, you know, a lot of aquatic centers are doing this. And, and it's perfect timing because, yeah, you let the dogs go in, whatever, and then we'll start uh, cleaning and getting it to winterizing the pool. So it's yeah. a perfect time for that. Um, so, yeah, so that's going to be from 4.30 to 6.30 on Monday the 23rd. And that should be a lot of fun to see. It's going to be a great event. My parents' dog, Sam, has not stopped talking about it. Every time I see him, it's like, hey, are you going to take me to the dog yeah, park? Like, oh, I got my, me and my buddies there, you yeah, know? Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's going to be a good time. It, it, the fun. response has been overwhelmingly very positive, and I think there's a lot of excited people. You know, I think we're talking around 50 dogs or so, but um, – we're going to, as long as it's safe and, and dogs are acting as they're supposed to act and not aggressive and those type of things, you know, that I think that number is going to be flexible and mm -hmm. see how that works. But it's for the dogs, so it's not for people. So Right. You remember that, everybody. <laughs> so remember that. Human companions, are, it's, not a, it's not a dog person swim together day. Um, you may but, call each other dog, but that but doesn't count. That, that's exactly. not the same thing. It's, it's just a nickname. For the fur-bearing dogs and uh but that should be a lot of fun there for that. Uh, you know, when it comes to the aquatic center, um, the sports complex coming up, you know, any of these things, too. I think that um, it, we, we don't think about it very often, but these are things that take time. They take time mm -hmm. for word of mouth to spread. Yeah. Um, there's not a whole lot of money in the advertising, you know, bin. And even if mm -hmm. there was, you could advertise like McDonald's and you're still not going to reach everybody. Right. So oftentimes you're not going to get in the black with anything for a year or two. Right. I mean, there's almost every industry in the world has to face mm -hmm. that. Looking at it that way, um, I can see success happening for that place and mm -hmm. it eventually being in the black for sure as it spreads and as people mm -hmm. know more about it. Um, one of the things that can help with those things, and I don't think it's a huge deciding factor, but, you know, giving it a name. And, and I know that we had the name polling yeah. that was going on. How's that going? So I have not gotten an update on that. So okay. I need to do that, see kind of where they're at on that. Sure. And, um, you know, and see, you know, like I said all along, if, if it ends up being what it is, it is. And if the community thinks something else would be better, it's, I, I think that's a good opportunity for the community to weigh in yeah. on it. And, and should they not have a desire, that's, that's fine also. You know, uh, one of the things you, you mentioned dogs and with the, the dog at the aquatic center uh, day at the dog day for the dogs there. That's going to be fun. Um, dog uh, dogs are, are certainly one of those things. This this area loves animals. Oh, yeah. You know, dogs, cats. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. Livestock. We love our animals in this area. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's been missing for a little while is a dog park. And, and one of the interesting things that I think uh, a lot of people can take some information about about this is one of the, the most common things for cities that are succeeding right now. And I hadn't looked this data up in a while, and especially with the new census numbers, it, there is a correlation between people that are dog friendly, communities that are dog friendly and their income and the rise of income in those communities and the rise of people uh, moving to those areas. The, it is not a coincidence that the more successful areas are dog friendly, are animal friendly. And, and so one of the questions, and we've talked to some people about the dog park and, and you know, uh, possibly in Port Edwards and that. Yep. Yep. Um, is, that the, is that kind of the most recent t conversations when it comes to a dog park? Has there been any conversations about a dog park in the area? Yeah, I've kind of been talking a lot. And so um, recently we did a survey in a community. It's, um, we haven't released, uh, it's just in a draft form right now as a kind of a park, um, park improvement plans. Um, you should do that every, every X number of years. And, and on a, one of the top things on that was a dog park. Mm. And, um, you know, cause we had one here for a while and, yeah. you know, whatever reason, however, it ended up going away, it was no longer there. And so I've been advocating for a dog park working, you know, I, I found a location up by, um, Norton street, you know, Obviously, I think there's some people in the area that may not be happy with that location, but ultimately I, what I kind of decided that I was going to do is I'm going to meet with staff. We're going to kind of come up with three locations that we think would be um, viable options and then take that to the Park and Rec Commission and let that Park and Rec Commission to uh, discuss and see pros and cons and hear from the community um, on, on a location. And then we can go forward from there on the planning. But I think a community our size definitely needs to have a dog park. 
Uh, it was successful on the previous one. You know, other communities have them. My my sister talks about down in Milwaukee, her and her friends meet at the dog park and drink coffee on Saturday mornings. You know, and it's just what people do. And, and it's a great place to let dogs run and socialize. And, you know, I, I think it's important in a community like like an aquatic center and everything else that we have. It's it's about creating that place in the community. And, well, and, and Rapids has always been, and I, maybe not always, but it's certainly in the time that I've lived here, has been in this middle ground where mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a smaller community, but it's not, especially yeah. compared to some of the other surrounding communities. Mm-hmm. And then in, when you include a Port Edwards or, or mm-hmm. something like that, or you know any of the surrounding cities, you start to get that raises up mm-hmm. more and more. And so the idea of wanting to stay rural and stay that community kind of area and, and, and friendly and all that, and at the same time, you know, you have people coming into the area or you have people in the area that are younger and you want to keep them in the area. So mm-hmm. how do you do that? Yep. Um, finding that balance. can It, it can't be easy. It, is that something that you and the staff have to kind of like, whether you say it out loud or not, is something that you have to kind of consider whenever you're making these decisions, a dog park, any of these other kind of things? Absolutely. And I, and I lean on Kyle Kearns. He's our community mm-hmm. development mm-hmm. director. And he he was recently on here mm-hmm. and he's a planner, you know, and he's thinking about these things because he's out there talking with developers, trying to bring... Um, you know, different things to our community and trying to sell our communities, developers. And, and all those things are uh, check boxes that a developer can check off that, you know, they're, that our community has. But, yeah, you know, we're Wisconsin Rapids. I, I like our town. I like the size of our town. You know, and yeah, I don't want to be a big city. If I, if I wanted to be, I'd move there. Right, right. And so I, I, I like our community. And, you know, but, I, you know, we need to have some opportunities here for – any age person, whoever wants to get a job, and we need things to do. You know, uh, the kids always talk about there's nothing to do here, and mm. and there is things to do, and it's just, you know, it's all relative. And, yeah, absolutely. And so, and yeah. and, and it's it get, part of the balance of this too is, you know, I, I think you you hit it on the head there. That it was a great line. You know, if I wanted to be, live in a big city, I would. Mm-hmm. That's I think the majority of people in this area, yep. and the majority of people that move mm-hmm. here or or live stay here mm-hmm. is because of that. And at the same time, um, the, the you don't want this community to end up like some of the ones that you drive through to get here or right. anything where right. it's just a ghost town right. uh, because they didn't do any of this. They didn't take some of this stuff into consideration. It, it's a tough balance. It, mm-hmm. I don't know if there's a perf- – I don't. there is no perfect answer. There's no necessarily perfect blueprint for it. Mm-hmm. But I do think that all things considered, um, everybody in your, your staff, everybody over there has been doing – not just the best they can, but doing very good work when it comes to that, of, of finding that yeah. balance. And at the same time, along with that, just piggybacking off of that, um, finding things where, okay, a dog park, that's a good idea. It should help with a lot of the stuff we're talking about, but what is it going to cost? How is it going to put us you know, even more in debt? Right. And balancing that out. Uh, it, it, all those things factoring in cannot... It's not easy, but I, I think, you know, for everything being considered, doing a good job. You know, sometimes, it, you know, we hear the buzzword, this public-private partnership. And, you know, I I struggle with sometimes with that because a lot of times it starts out good like that. And then then the, that private group kind of maybe wanes and, and they're not as active and then it becomes public. So even I've been saying about this dog park, you know, I, I'm a – I'm okay with taking it on as a city project, you know, and should there be a friends of a dog park group that wants to come together and maybe buy agility equipment or, you know, some amenity for the park and donate it to the park. You know, I fully support that, but I struggle with trying to say, okay, let's get a schedule together and have a private group take care of, you know, changing garbages or do anything like that because, you know, a lot of times the city will end up taking it on later on. And, mm-hmm. and but I think that you can still have a partnership yeah. in, in, in some form or fashion, but I'm good with going into it that. We uh, appreciate the time as always, Mayor. Thanks a lot for being in with us. Uh, we never, we always run out of time. But, you know, it always happens. <laughs> I, I know it just flies right by. It really does. Um, really, thanks a lot for being here. Uh, say hi to all your staff, everybody over there for us. And uh, we'll talk again next month. Perfect. Thanks, James. Thank you. And a big thank you to Kevin and Joe and all of our friends over at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you real soon, too. We'll be back with more Morning Magazine right here on WFHR, locally grown radio.